three months after the 13th Amendment to the United States, and eight months before Constitution and slavery in the United States. On April 14, 1865, while the President and First Lady were attending a play at Fort Spewer, Booth snuck into the President's box and shot him. Lincoln died from the wound the next day. He was the first U.S. President to be assassinated. Let's travel back to 1865, to see the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and why Booth shot him, before 88 years later, President JFK was killed in 1963. In 1864, Lincoln's first term as president was coming to an end. There was supposed to be an election in November. But it was possible to hold an election during a civil war? Lincoln's advisors suggested putting it off until the war was over. He refused. We cannot have free government without elections. He explained. So a campaign began, although people in the rebel states would not be voting. Lincoln's opponent was George McClellan, the general who wouldn't fight. In his speeches, McClellan hinted that he would be willing to compromise bro and the war. Lincoln was not at all sure he would win the election. Many Americans were fed up in the war. They were ready to vote for anyone who promised a quick end. But Lincoln knew that the soldiers supported him. So he made sure they were able to vote. Then, right before the election, the Union won some huge victories. General William Sherman, who had been trained by future 18th President Ulysses S. Grant, captured Atlanta. General Philip Sheridan, also trained by Grant, won a series of battles in the Shenandoah Valley. And Grant himself was close to taking the Confederate capital at Richmond, Virginia. With the faith in the war restored, the voters elected Lincoln to a second term. By the beginning of 1865, the end of the war was finally in sight. On March 25th, Grant's army captured Richmond. Then he cornered the troops of General Robert E. Lee, the leader of the Confederate army. Lee had no choice. On April 9th, he surrendered his army to Grant at Appomattox, Virginia. For all practical purposes, the Civil War was over. Lincoln was not present for the surrender. The two generals met in a courthouse. Grant was careful to treat Lee generously. He knew that was what Lincoln wanted. The defeated soldiers would not be paraded throughout the streets or mocked. They would even be allowed to keep their horses. And Grant arranged for food to be given to the starving Confederate troops. Back in Washington, excited crowds surrounded the White House. Everyone was calling for Lincoln. Tad was given a big cheer when he appeared at the window waving a Confederate flag. Then Lincoln arrived. He asked the band to play the Southern song, Dixie. He had always liked the tune, he said, and now the song belonged to the whole country again. Lincoln had been planning for this day for a long time. Bringing back peace was even more important than waging war. And it was going to be just as difficult. With Lincoln's encouragement. Congress passed the 13th Amendment to the Constitution. This amendment would outlaw slavery everywhere in the United States. In his second inaugural speech, Lincoln had said that he wanted to welcome the rebel states back to the Union. But as he spoke to the crowd outside at the Capitol building, not everyone was cheering for him. A photograph shows John Wilkes Booth and his comrades standing nearby. These men were already plotting to kill the President. Booth was a successful actor. Some people called him the handsomest man in America. He was devoted to the Confederacy and believed slavery was not just good for white people, it was even good for black people. He despised Lincoln, who he thought was rude and uncultured. He was sure Lincoln was destroying the country. About a month into his second term, Lincoln had a terrible dream. In it, he walked into the White House and saw himself lying dead in a coffin. He asked the guard what had happened. The guard said, he was killed by an assassin. Three days later, on April 14, 1865, Lincoln went to a comedy at Ford's Theater with his wife and some friends. He and Mary wanted to relax and enjoy themselves. That afternoon he had said to her, We must both be more cheerful in the future. At the theater, Lincoln sat in a rocking chair and Mary hung on his arm and flirted with her husband. John Wilkes Booth learned Lincoln was going to be at the theater. Booth had acted there and knew his way around the building, so he had no trouble getting in and sneaking upstairs to the president's private box. He crept up behind Lincoln and fired his gun. Six Emperor Tyrannus. <laughs>
The sound of Booth's gunshot was drowned out by the laughter from the audience. Booth escaped by leaping dramatically to the stage. This was a showy move he had often used when he was acting. Lincoln did not die immediately. He was carried from the theater to a house across the street. The bed there was so small that the tall president didn't fit on it. He had to propped up on pillows. Surrounded by his family, doctors, and advisors, he later in a coma for nine hours. At 7.22 the next morning, Abraham Lincoln died. He was 56 years old. John Wilkes Booth was never brought to trial. A few days later after the shooting, his hiding place was discovered. He was shot to death trying to escape. Booth thought what he'd done was noble and heroic. Tell my mother I die for my country. However, all over the nation, people mourned the dead president. Clocks were stopped to mark the moment of his death. Millions came to Washington, D.C., to pay their respects. Then Lincoln's body was put on a special train back to Springfield. That was where he would be buried. His son Willie's coffin was dug up and traveled with him. The train retracted the route Lincoln had taken when he first came to Washington as president. At each stop, there were elaborate parades with the coffin mounted on a wagon. Sometimes the lines were three miles long. People waited hours for the chance to say goodbye to the president they had loved. Mary Lincoln never really recovered from the shock of her husband's death. She was too upset to go to the funeral. Even now, people criticized her. They said when she left the White House she took things that didn't belong to her. Her later life was not happy. Tad's death, probably from tuberculosis, at age 18 was a terrible blow. Of all her children, only Robert lived to be an adult. But he and Mary did not get along. For a while he and her locked up in a hospital, claiming that she was insane. Robert had a long career as a lawyer and diplomat. He had three children and several grandchildren. Robert lived to be 82, dying in 1926. Today, 200 years after his birth, Abraham Lincoln is more honored than any other president, except perhaps George Washington. He appears on the penny and the $5 bill. He has a monument in the nation's capital. His face is carved on Mount Rushmore. Many cities, several mountains, five national parks, and 19 counties have been named after him. Hundreds of books have been written about him. He is remembered along with Washington on President's Day. Almost from the moment of his death, Lincoln became a larger-than-life figure. People saw him as a kind of saint. Of course he was just a man. He made mistakes and he held some opinions that are hard to accept today. But it is clear he was no ordinary man. He kept the country together during one of its darkest times. America was lucky to have him. The best way to predict your future is to create it. Over the course of his life, Lincoln reunited a fractured nation and almost single-handedly ended slavery in the U.S. A boy who only had a year of school. A practical joker. One of the greatest presidents ever.